Hi, Sam Tobit coming back at you. And we are answering another viewer request. This one is a little bit different, though. This has got more piano theory um, enthralled in it. And uh, I did a little research because uh, I said I would do that. If it's something that I'm not familiar with, I will do my um, you know Google research to get uh, at a correct response to it and then I'll try to apply it to how it's being used in gospel music and I think I can at least skim the surface of it of course you could do your own research let's go to uh, what I found basic meaning of the term extended chords and uh, we've got a definition here make sure I pull up the right page here we go definition of extended chords an extended chord is a tertian chord, that's a new term which I've got, to, I've got to learn, meaning it is based on stacking thirds like major, minor, and seventh chords. Sounds like what we do in gospel. The difference, however, is that extended chords extend past the seventh note into the next octave. So let's go to our piano, and as I looked at some of the examples of extended chord, it began to add another level of music theory that I was never had to, never challenged on. Not that I don't mind being challenged, because I'm also still a learning musician. We have our basic scale. If we're going to count numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight would be our octave or back to one. So if we're going to do the extended chord, um, basic uh, Google uh, reference, if we're going to do chords, which are thirds, one, two, three, one, two, three, there's our chord, and we're just playing them across. That's what they call your major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, now, once we pass the seventh note, which is right here, once we pass the seventh note, we are now getting into that chord, that term of extended range. Once we go to the next, well, actually, now that we're here, because we've passed the seventh note, now an octave, but we're putting a chord there. So we've now extended that range of here. That should be eight, but it should be one to one. Then this would be 9, 10, no, there is no 10th, it's to 11th, 12th, and then the 13th, provided that this stays our chord. Now let's see what, I want to see how does, how does Cordy look at this, 7, okay. So there it is giving me my 11th and my 13th. Again, this is electronic. So you start looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Perhaps that'll give us our, our 13th. So what does, um, and how would we apply this understanding of an extended chord? I look at it from a standpoint of how I'm playing chords. I'll look at a chord and I'll go like this. I've extended from the lowest note to the highest note and added all these notes in between. Now the minute I change a note, all the designations of this chord changes, as you can see. So, is this kind of information, um, how can I put the word, a a a a applicable to playing music? Yes and yes. Yes and yes. Because you need to understand where you want to go musically to be able to know what to apply. Most times when you're playing, if you're doing just root chords, And now you want to go beyond the triad chord.
you want to be able to extend beyond that. So if you were writing this, and I'm going to look at once again using my, um, I have uh, Sibelius first software on my computer program where I can actually write out some of these chords that I'm doing. I may put together a, a series of lessons which will go on my Patreon page of these chords written out. For the learned musician who understands and who can learn quickly from looking at sheet music versus my hands and a chordy app. And they will be able to help me get a better understanding as am I approaching it correctly from a theory standpoint. So the extended chord can be any chords that's outside of the seven scale tones from whatever key you're in. Um, trying to think what other approach I could perhaps give you with that. The the building of chords, and you always talk, I will, you've heard me say to you many times that you should look to build chords from, from your root. Usually you, I always build them from the melody before I go way outside of a chord. Um, let's see, what kind of song can I pick that you may be familiar with? Congregational song, Oh Magnify the Lord, I think, for he is worthy to be praised. Looking at the melody like that, you'll see me give you the chords. Wrong chord. I'm still staying within the framework of the scale. So I'm staying in the framework really of, of two octaves. But when I branch outside of those two octaves, Trying to think of how I would how I would play it in an actual service because again I will go in in a whole lot of different formats. I, I I may go classical with it. Of course, you got the what they call jazz the jazz style, which is seventh. Jumping around is kind of extending the chords from the, from the center out in both directions. So hopefully my explanation using some of the basic terminology from Google and also showing, demonstrating how I approach it from an extended chord standpoint will give you um, the information that you're looking for, of course. As I say, there's nothing wrong with going to Google and doing a search for some of these terminologies. I like taking apart songs, which is, helps me to demonstrate the how you use a lot of this terminology that uh, the more um, knowledgeable musicians who have been watching my videos use. But again, I, I, I never question um, a, a, a viewer request 
because now you, you've caused me to look a little further into what I'm doing so I can understand how to better approach it. Going back to our explanation, definition of extended chords. This is a Google def definition on one of, one of the three sites I looked at. An extended chord is a tertian chord, meaning it is based on stacking thirds, like major, minor, and seventh chords. The difference, however, is that the extended chords extend past the seventh note into the next octave. All right. Take care, and I'll see you next time.